Hello and welcome back to Direct Capital Channel. Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin's price action through the lens of minor activity. Because if we just look at this price action over here, this crash took a lot of mining operations out of business. Many smaller mining operations had to capitulate and either turn off their machines or just close up shop altogether because electricity costs, infrastructure costs, this all outweighed minor revenue. But I also want to talk about this upcoming rejection from 7,200 in terms of minor activity as well. So let's dive into the update. Bitcoin hash rate has been in an extended downtrend for a while now. But if we just look at the macro perspective, it's not a big deal really it is a pullback but it is a healthy pullback in terms of hash rate of course miners are leaving the space they are turning off their machines they are capitulating and that's why we're seeing an extended downtrend on hash rate because miners aren't really incentivized to be mining anymore. And this is why a lot of smaller mining operations have capitulated and closed up shop. So as miners are leaving the space, what we're seeing in terms of how long it takes for a Bitcoin block to be mined, you know, this is the average roughly 10 minutes. Every block is mined every 10 minutes and this is the average. But now we're actually seeing that we're at the all time highs in terms of how long it actually actually takes to mine a block. And the reason for this is, of course, the declining hash rate, the fact that there are less and less miners because Bitcoin really had that crash and it wasn't profitable to mine anymore. So it is becoming a longer process to actually mine a block. And what we can see here is that instead of the 10 minutes that the average assumes here, the normal general standard of 10 minutes for mining a block, we're actually seeing that it's taking 12.5 minutes. And this this might not seem as a big difference between 10 minutes and 12.5 minutes, but if we just compare the hourly amount that a block is being mined, so if it takes 10 minutes to mine a block in an hour, which is 60 minutes, that's six blocks, right? But right now it's actually taking 12.5 minutes to mine a block, which means that in an hour you get less than five blocks blocks. In fact, to be precise, that's 4.8 blocks. So you can see what a difference that is. Mining for six blocks versus for 4.8 blocks, that is a difference, especially if price has crashed so much that mining for Bitcoin isn't as profitable as it was. So not only are you getting less Bitcoin, but you're actually being rewarded less for it as well. So it just doesn't make sense to mine Bitcoin when prices are low. And this is why we're seeing an all time high in terms of how long it actually takes to mine a block. And this of course is tying in with minor revenue, right? We can see that minor revenue is in an extended downtrend as well, a very sharp downtrend ever since that crash. And of course, this is why we're seeing an all time high in terms of how long it takes to mine a block. By the way, guys, before I forget, these are on-chain analytics charts from Glassnode. So you can check out the link in the description down below to check these charts out yourself. But what I want to focus on right now is that every time we've seen an all time high in the amount of blocks being mined, we always saw a reversal in Bitcoin's price action. So over here, you can see black is Bitcoin's price action. When we got that first all time high in the block interval, we saw a decline in Bitcoin's price action. And we're seeing something quite similar over here, although this time it's preceding a bottom for Bitcoin's price action. So we're seeing a quite, it takes quite a long time to mine a block and this is preceding an increase in Bitcoin's price action. What about here? Let's have a look at this spike in the block interval and you can see that it actually proceeds further downside in Bitcoin's price action. So what can we say here? We can already say based on these three instances that every time we see a spike to near all time high levels, we see a reversal, right? We saw a reversal towards the downside this time around, right? So we saw a reversal in Bitcoin's price action towards the downside over here, a reversal towards the upside this time around, and a reversal towards the downside again right over here. So essentially speaking, if we're just talking about this being at all time highs, we're seeing that it takes a long time to mine a block and this is going to most likely precede a reversal in Bitcoin's price action. Now, the direction here 
for me is quite clear at this time. It does tie in with what I've been speaking about in yesterday's video and in the video before then. This is of course the two year moving average that I've been talking about over the past few days. This is most likely going to be a resistance and we even tend to see areas of outsized returns form below the two year moving average. So we are probably gonna occupy this wedge for a little while and I think that that starts off with a rejection from around these price regions. Maximum 7,200 is where we might see that rejection, but I feel like we could also see that rejection a little bit earlier because we're still searching for the top of the wedge. This wedge, Though it's already showing some promising signs, we don't know where the top of this wedge is going to actually be. But what history is suggesting to us in terms of the block interval, how long it takes to mine a block, we might have a reversal in Bitcoin's price action. And seeing as Bitcoin is already in an uptrend, that reversal can't occur to the upside. It has to occur to the downside. So a rejection is likely and based on minor activity, we can actually predict Bitcoin reversals in price. And actually, here's also another interesting relationship. The fact that it's taking a long time, or at least a longer time, to mine a specific amount of Bitcoin, that also means that this difficulty right over here for miners is going to take a little bit more time to adjust. The protocol, the blockchain adjusts every now and then so that this difficulty can decrease, so that hash rate can increase back again because it's not profitable for miners to be mining right now. So the protocol is programmed to have a decrease in difficulty. And once this difficulty decrease happens, and that's supposed to happen around now, I don't know if it's happened already or if it's going to happen in the next few days, but this difficulty is going to decrease a substantial amount, probably one of the most sharpest decreases because we haven't seen a decrease for a while in terms of difficulty. We had a bit of a retrace over here, but the sharpest one so far was around early January, late 2018. So we're gonna see one of the sharpest decreases in difficulty so as to incentivize and bring back those miners once again so that they can increase the hash rate because we are seeing a downtrend in terms of hash rate. So a decrease in difficulty is going to attract miners into the space again so that they can mine for a good reward but that doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin's price isn't going to tumble a little bit more. And we've been talking about this over the past few days. You can see that over here we've seen capitulation and we tend to see a capitulation in miners in terms of their unrealized profit and loss. So whenever they're in a loss, it tends to precede market bottoms. So we've seen a market bottom over here and over here if we just look at the black price action for Bitcoin. So if we just do this, this uh, capitulation for miners in terms of uh, their losses. They had more losses than profits in this area at the market cycle bottom, and then we saw a reversal. The same thing happened over here, and the same thing is happening right now. But the thing is, we still have to see a higher low in terms of this minor capitulation relative to Bitcoin's price. So you can actually see that capitulation comes in higher lows right over here as well and here, so we might have had the bottom, but what we need to look for is that miners are going to capitulate, but a little less sharply, a little less strongly than before, so as to form this higher low, because of course, red means capitulation, but we are currently in orange, so there is some hope for miners, and with this upcoming difficulty adjustment, we might see an increase, or at least we're probably gonna most likely see an increase in the hash rate. It will be more profitable for miners to be mining again, and because of that, we're gonna see a decline in how long it actually takes to mine a certain amount of Bitcoin. So we have a lot of moving parts over here, but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin won't decline towards the downside. In fact, another major low is still very much on the cards, even though a bottom might be in. So this, even if we revisit this higher low over here, this would be the high, the lower 4,000s, below 4,500, I think. So we just have to watch for this higher low here because it is a historical tendency. And to get that higher low, we have to see a retrace in Bitcoin's price. And of course, in terms of the block interval, how long it takes to mine a block, this 
precedes a reversal and it's most likely going to be a reversal to the downside. And having said that, that's just about it for today's video. Please consider dropping a like and of course subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I'm Rex Capital and I'll see you in the next one. Speak soon.